I think that before his uh, keynote speech, I'd like Patrick to come up to receive the award. Uh, thank you, everybody. So, Fumian um, told me that I only have 90 seconds for the acceptance speech. I mean, seriously, you know, I commended and gave a lot of respect to all the recipients of the previous awards. And I would like to give you the secret. What's the reason of me getting this special award, which is for the first time in Monty J? I was asked to be a keynote speaker by Humin. However, he could not tell me when I'm going to give the speech. It could be during lunchtime, or it could be in the afternoon, and it could be in the evening. So I'm the all-time stand-in. So I asked him, what is my reward by being the all-time stand-in? He said, okay, what do you want? I said, I want a reward. I want an award. And he asked me, what kind of award do you want? I said, why don't we make it up one? So I said, hey, you know, since I got an entrepreneur award from ENY 10 years ago, this is a good 10th anniversary. I should get another one. All right? That's how it comes about. So really, this is the reason I got this. Now, however, because during the lunchtime, if I had to give the speech, it's all about investing in AI. And in the afternoon, if I have to give the speech, then it's all about the technicality of AI and the stage of the technology today. But now, I ended up having to do it tonight for the Grand Gala. So, I think the only thing I can talk about AI is the funny part of AI, all right, just to keep it entertaining. So I'm going to talk about three things. First, how did AI come about? And second, what in that year we are doing with AI today? And third, how AI could replace all of us here tonight, all right, so we don't have to work at all. No, just kidding. We still have to work. First, a little bit of history. You probably know today most of the AI people are software people. I'm not a software guy. I graduated with electrical engineering, and so I'm a hardware guy. Put circuits together. Just would like to give you a little bit of history. AI was actually first invented as a piece of hardware back in the 50s in Cornell University. Now, the second fact is, just like anything else, Technologies moves west from the East Coast. So when the hot first neural circuit was devised for AI back in the 50s in Cornell University, it moved down to New York City. The first breakthrough of AI changed from hardware to software in 1987 in NYU, using AI neural software to actually automatically read zip code for the U.S. Postal Office. From here on out, it keeps moving west. And everybody knows today, most of the AI research is actually being done here in Silicon Valley. And of course, you know, switching from university and government now, we're mostly in the private hands. The biggest contribution to the AI community in the neural networks, of course, big companies such as Google. And as a matter of fact, today, even for Netgear, our AI is based on the open source code coming out from both NYU as from Google. I mean, uh, the Google's contribution to the AI is their, their TensorForce, which is the open source they do. The interesting piece is, if you happen to be in AI, you're really in for good many, many years. 
Uh, in Silicon Valley, we just could not compete to, um, to actually recruit enough AI engineers, which could be in a, you know, applied math, or it, it could be in, um, in uh, neuroscience or in computer vision. So we decided to open up a lab in New York City. And guess where did I choose it? Our location of our AI lab is actually in Chinatown in New York City. Because I figure that every time I go there, I would be able to take them to the best dim sum restaurant in New York City in Chinatown, and then we would be able to maintain them. So if you know of any people, actually, you know, a lot of students going through AI training are all in the East Coast, in MIT, uh, in NYU, as with in Carnegie Mellon. Now, if you know of anybody who would like to work in Chinatown, get the best dim sum, let me know, all right? Okay, let me talk about what we're doing in, in that gear with AI. As a matter of fact, uh, as you probably know, Netgear is the number one brand in Wi-Fi at home around the world. Today, our Wi-Fi network at home already integrated with voice recognition software such as Alexa. So you will be able through the Amazon Echo or Amazon Dot to tell the Wi-Fi network to shut it down, to turn it on, or particularly, you know, change the password and all that. But going forward, uh, we will see more and more of the other devices being integrated with the voice. Uh, we believe that. I mean, you've heard all about it, right? I mean, the refrigerators, the toasters, the blinds, and all that are uh, already, uh, you know, and, and fused, infused with AI. And very soon, the light bulbs and all that, when you walk in the house, you will use the voice recognition. Hey, turn the lights on for me. So that's completely doable. However, one big breakthrough for Netgear for the past 18 months is the introduction of our IP surveillance camera with the line of Arlo. And uh, if you notice, this afternoon we actually have a big booth showing off some of our cameras. The Arlo cameras was introduced about 18 months ago in the United States as well as around the world. Since then, we have captured more than 40% of the market in the U.S. The simple reason is because that is the only IP camera that anybody could install outdoor in minutes with an app. You don't have to find any power outlet, and you don't even have to find Wi-Fi. As long as there is cellular coverage or Wi-Fi coverage, you would have an auto camera for you to look after what you value, your household, your kids, your pets, and all that. Now, what we're adding to the camera today is, as you probably know, the cameras are triggered by sound or triggered by motion. However, today, the cameras could not distinguish between the motion of a person or the waving of the leaves of the trees. The camera would not be able to distinguish between the sound of a crying baby versus a laughing baby. So those are the areas that we are really focusing a lot on, is we're using a lot of the technology of AI, keep training our neural software to how to distinguish between the baby crying or the baby laughing. Now, one thing that I just talked about for AI software today, the dirty little secret is, for AI to be more intelligent, you have to keep training it with samples. If it's voice recognition, it's different samples of voice. If it is pattern recognition, it's different video. As today, actually, most of these training is actually outsourced. Uh, we also outsource all the training of our AI software to Asia, and we see these trends will continue, that the, the core of the development is here in Silicon Valley, but the tagging, the training, the annotation, all that tedious work is now being outsourced in other parts of the world. Okay, so let's talk about what we could do in the future. Now today, we are still focusing on pattern recognition, but going forward, what we would like to do is actually coordinate all the data together. We do big data analysis, we do recognition, so that they all work harmoniously together. For example, the, the 
the future we're envisaging is that uh, on a good thing, when you walk into a house, the lights will turn on automatically for you. Uh, when you sit down on your favorite couch, all right, your, your, your audiovisual equipment will actually play the video or the music you like. Uh, and the same thing is, when the baby is crying, you will be automatically alert whether the baby is hungry, in which case, food will be ready, or the baby is longing for the mother, and if the mom is not around, then the TV will play the video of the mom. So those are the future that we see that is totally possible. On the security side, it's the same thing. Today, we could only tell you that there is a person walking across your house or towards your house. But in the future, we envisage that we will be able to tell you exactly whether the person is a suspicious person. If it is a sus suspicious person, we will be able to continue to monitor that person's behavior. If we decide that it's time to have some action taken, then we could turn the lights on around your house, inside your house, give you an alert, or even call the police. So that is the future we're talking about. However, there's one more step further. That's the holy grail of AI. Today, as I just mentioned, to really get our machines to be smarter and smarter, we have to keep training the machines by giving them a lot of samples. Now, what is being researched today, again, it's mostly from the East Coast, but we believe that it will migrate west, is to have the AI engine to learn by itself. That is, there is no need to train them anymore. They will learn by themselves. That is what we call strong AI. And that would really open up an entire bright new future. And it doesn't really matter whether here in Silicon Valley or it is in Asia, be it in Taipei, be it in Beijing, be it in Shenzhen. I think this is the holy grail that everybody's going after. And then we're looking for, towards to the future. Now, all the future that I painted will take years to come, but I'm very confident that Netgear plus all of our competitors as well, our partners, uh, both here in Silicon Valley as well as in Taipei or in Beijing and Shenzhen, will deliver that to all of you. So that's my speech. I hope that is short enough, right, Huming? All right, thank you.